You're listening to the Ball and Life podcast, episode number four. Welcome back to the Baldwin Life podcast, the podcast from and for the city of Baldwin. I'm your host, Kirsten, with the city of Baldwin, joined once again by Scott of the Baldwin Police Department and Andy, our Director of Development and Assistant City Administrator. In today's episode, we have a special interview with Baldwin's aquatic manager, Adam Pepper. Unless you've been hibernating all winter, you know by now about the upgrades happening out at North Point Aquatic Center. And if you've driven down Holloway Road recently, you've probably seen the new splash pad and play structure. Adam is here today to answer all kinds of questions about those upgrades, including some of the ins and outs of the improvements, what new rules will be in place, and what other exciting things are happening at the pool this summer. So let's talk ball and life. Welcome back to another episode of the Ball and Life podcast. We're joined today with Scott, Andy, and Adam from the Aquatics Department here at the City of Baldwin. And if you haven't already heard, North Point Aquatic Center is making some pretty big improvements before the start of the 2018 summer season. We've got a new play feature, a new splash pad, and a lot of exciting things that are going on there. So uh, I'd like to take a moment to introduce Adam and say welcome to the podcast. Uh, Adam is the Aquatics Manager for the City of Baldwin. And Adam, could you give a little brief introduction for yourself and how long you've been with the city? Sure. I've been with the city for just over 12 years. This is my 13th summer um, working out at North Point Aquatic Center. And uh, I've been in aquatics for a little over 20 years doing different types of management, uh, aquatics, uh, sports, and uh, different types of trainings and teachings and stuff for over the past 20 years. And you're a diver? Yes, I'm a former diver. That's right. Uh, Adam's famous for doing um, a lot of really cool, fancy dives out at North Point at the end of the swim and dive team season, aren't you? More popular for a belly flop than anything, but yes. Hey, it's popular. Um, Adam, can you give a little bit of an overview of the new play structure? Yes, uh, the the play feature is kind of an an outdoor adventure themed um, play feature. Uh, We've got a whole bunch of different activities with that. There's a a new slide that's on there that kind of wraps around underneath the feature. It is an actual true water slide, so there's water actually going through the water slide. Uh, and then we got a little racer that comes comes out of it um, and a couple other play features and activities with it. Um, and then we also have Hector the Herring, uh, which if you've driven by, we have our own version of Big Bird out there. It's not Sesame Street, but we do have a, a huge bird out there, Big Blue, Hector the Herring. Um, and then it's hard to see from Holloway Road, but once you get into the facility, you can kind of see there's some other friends of Hector's. We've got uh, we got Phil, uh, Flippy the frog, we got Baby the bee, and Finn the fish, and a couple others just to keep things fun. Yeah, it does look very fun. If you um, have driven by, you will have seen a lot of those new features, so uh, really looking forward to that. Adam, some of the feedback that we've gotten in recent years, I know we did a survey at the end of the season last year at North Point, was that the old bucket falls, um, so that old play feature, the bucket was a little too large and we actually got quite a bit of feedback that some of the kids thought it was scary when the bucket would actually dump all the water out. Um, so what does the new book, new bucket look like in comparison to the old one? Well, the, the new bucket is just a little bit smaller. The old bucket was what we call a six foot bucket, it, six foot diameter. And this one's only four feet in diameter. So it's a little bit less water and there's a little bit of a bell warning that's going to go off right before the bucket dumps. So everyone's going to know uh, a little bit before. But we also have a little mini buckets uh, throughout the facility. Uh, a couple or a few at the this, um, leisure pool. Um, Hector has one coming off. And then there's a small one hidden in the play feature also. So there's smaller buckets spread out. Um, plenty of water being sprayed, but it won't be as big and loud as the old bucket used to be. And can you talk a little bit about the piece itself? Um, As I understand it, it was custom made. Yeah, well, there's a general design, but we get to custom design the the features that we want and colors and, you know, the the design of it uh, was was all based on this outdoor theme adventure uh, that we got going on. Uh, But some other parts about that feature is it it is a completely stainless steel uh, structure and it's not flooded lines, which means that it is, it's piped with uh, PVC flex pipe. So there's not going to be any water sitting inside the lines or the the feature itself. It's going to be plumbed uh, with PVC, which is going to make it easier for maintenance and uh, repairs and stuff later on down the road. Um, And then it won't corrode to last much longer than any other, the old galvanized steel type of uh, features that we've had in the past. And also with the improvements, there's some changes that are coming to the rules with that new structure. Can you explain some of those? Yeah, with the old structure and the old slides and how it was built with the the landing mats and whatnot, 
Uh, we had to restrict the height maximum uh, to 48 inches to go down the slides. With this new feature, that all the slides have what we call a trough uh, at the bottom. So you actually slide into the water opposed to sliding and landing into the water. So we don't have a height maximum or restriction on it. Um, and we don't have, the f since the feature is so strong and sturdy, we don't have an age requirement either. So parents can go on to it. Uh, they can go uh, down a the slide. They can interact with them. Um, and it's going to be a lot more family friendly. Asking for a friend, um, is there a weight limit? <laughs> no, there is no weight limit. You should be fine. All right, we will know where to find Scott this summer then. Uh, Andy, I know that you have two kids who have been watching the progress and been really excited about the improvements. Um, what are they most excited about that you've heard them say? Well, last summer we, we visited the pool quite a bit and had a, a great time. But my five-year-old Max um, always asks when my friends will get it built. And he does think Hector the Herring's a parrot, and Kirsten has told him it's a parrot. So she perpetuated the lie. So he has no idea the difference between a parrot and a herring now. We'll just roll with it. And for the record, I did not tell him that. But uh, Scott, you're also out in the community a lot in your role with the community policing unit. Have you heard people sharing anything else that they're excited about? Um, we've gotten a lot of questions about what's going on at the North Point throughout the construction phase here. Um, people have mainly been concerned with, is it going to open on time? And we've been just blindly reassuring them that it is. And we were very happy to hear that it was going to open on time. Um, but yeah, people are just super excited for uh, another season at the North Point. And it's, it's always a popular destination for, uh, for the kids and adults alike. So I think that's the excitement is just all we've heard. Yeah, it's definitely a big attraction in the area. Adam, the other big improvement at North Point is the splash pad. Can you go into more depth about the improvements that are being made to that and why it will be better than the old one? Yes, uh, the splash pad that we have now is much more user-friendly and interactive. Um, it's four times the size, so it's about almost 120 square feet opposed to what it used to be. Um, the, the feature itself has multiple different sprays and interactive instead of just a couple sprays coming out of the ground. Uh, there's some hoops, there's some uh, fun form play features, there's some uh, spray uh, flowers and, and different things in there. Um, also, there is a, a new matting down. It's called a Life Floor, which is an, an outstanding product. Um, it's very user friendly, uh, it helps uh, keep kids safe. It's not the poured floor, it's a, it's a tile floor and it, uh, it's very, um, very well made and uh, good to use and stuff. We're really excited about having that out there. The other thing is that uh, it's fully accessible. It's ADA compliant. Um, anybody can use it. It's user friendly for all, all different abil abilities and capabilities. Um, and one other thing that I want to add in that it's not really seen or you can be seen, but the mechanics of this system also has a UV system. Uh, a UV system is a ultraviolet light. Um, and what that does, is it helps with the uh, disinfection of the, the water, uh, works with the chlorine and the, the the pH that we have uh, running through the water and stuff. And it's just an ad additive uh, protection for all the kids. So uh, we know that splash pads are uh, contaminated easily. And this is one of the things that we could use to help for, uh, prevent anything from happening with, with the water and uh, keep people safe. Um, and then we also have uh, sail shades over it. We, we've got enough sail shade to, to uh, uh, protect the kids from uh, the sun and stuff, but not too much shade that the parents can't get the sun themselves. So it's a, it's a good even medium. So I want to go back for just a minute to the life floor because we were talking about this the other day and we might have to actually do a video experiment with this. But you were saying that supposedly we should be able to drop an egg on that floor. Is that right? Not just an egg, but a raw egg and it shouldn't break. So um, we, we've seen some YouTube videos of uh, life floor and what they're capable of doing. So we'll have to test that out and maybe we'll, we'll get that video out sometime. That sounds like a fun project. So Adam, the pool closed last um, season for the off season starting on Labor Day. Can you tell our listeners what you had to do in order to prepare the pool for the off season? Yeah, so w when we close down a pool, we don't just drain it and walk away. What we have to do is called winterization. So there we, uh, we, we drain down the pool. We have to uh, empty the filters. We have to empty the, the chemtrol systems. We have to get all the water out of them. And then we bring the company out. Uh, Westport pools to winterize our pool. Basically, they use a huge um, air compressor and blow the lines out. And they, there are so many lines at North Point, it takes quite a few, a few days to get everything done. 
but they literally have to, to blow those lines out. And then afterwards, once they're all dry and they've got most of the moisture out, they add antifreeze and cap or plug certain parts of the pool so that when water does get into it, if it's weather related or whatever, that the antifreeze will catch it and, and keep it from freezing and, and breaking pipes and stuff. And similarly, can you give us a brief rundown of the things that you have to do, you know, this time of year when you're getting the aquatic center ready for opening day? Absolutely. So uh, with the pool being closed for nine months, they get very dirty uh, due to the weather and uh, everything else going on, debris and stuff that get into the lines and uh, sitting on the pool deck and whatever. So we do a lot of cleaning, a lot of uh, pushing of uh, uh, dirty water and uh, draining down stuff. Uh, it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of uh, elbow grease to get all those pools cleaned and ready to go. Um, and then depending on how things go through the season, we may have to paint a pool, may have to power wash some certain areas and get stuff done and then go through with inventory of all of our grates and inlets and whatnot, see what's uh, maintained or needs to be replaced or uh, repaired or anything like that. And uh, I know one of the big things that we deal with a lot in the off season is leaks and how we find them and how we fix them. Can you talk a little bit about how that process has gone this year? Yeah, so if we have the suspicion for, for a leak in a pool, which Leisure Pool was a unique situation this year, uh, but the, we found one of the best ways is to use a helium tester. Uh, what we do is we, we plug both ends of the line, we pump it through he, uh, full of helium, and then we tap uh, a couple holes in the concrete, and then we uh, have a guy come out with a sensor and test those areas, uh, which helps us find where that leak is. So that helium tester tells us where that leak is. Uh, from that point on, we break up that concrete. Uh, we work with the public works department. They come out and help us out greatly with that. Um, then our building systems guys and uh, public works dig as far down as they can to find the leak. Uh, then a building systems uh, take uh, whatever necessary means to fix that pipe. If it's replacing a, a length of it or uh, repairing just that spot where uh, a coupling's broke or whatever, um, and then we have to then fill in and uh, grade it back in and then public works come back in and uh, do another fill in and uh, do a great job filling in concrete and making it look just like it was beforehand. So it looks seamless like nothing was there. So just so people kind of have a context of how big of a project that can be, how many leaks did you find this off season? Uh, well, the leisure pool had about six or seven leaks by itself this year that we found, which was amazing. Um, in itself, but then we also found one at the the kitty pool, also the the new feature pool that we're we're working on. So um, it's something we deal with every year, but it was an odd number this year having so many just on one pool. That's a lot of concrete that you're breaking up, and a lot of work that goes into it. So, like you said, big thanks to the public works department for helping us get that ready, so that, like Scott said, we can ensure that we get the the facility open on time. Adam, an always important question when it comes to the city spending money on a project like this is. How much should this improvement project cost the city of Baldwin? Well, uh, this specific project, it, it, was, it went out in a different format. It was a design build uh, type of format. I think we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But the cost of this project was $850,000 is what it came back at, uh, just under that. Uh, but the good thing is we were awarded a St. Louis County Municipal Grant um, on top of that, which means they paid $525,000 of it. So the city only paid about three hundred twenty-five or so thousand dollars um, that we had to budget to to get this project done. And if you think about all the work that was done and what a great feature everything's going to be out there with the splash pad and the the new feature, uh, that's a pretty good deal. Absolutely. And like you said, this process was um, built using what's called a design build process, which was a brand new term for me. So Andy, I know you're really familiar with that process. Can you explain to our listeners what design build is? Well, being a government entity, we're required to go out for bid. So we get the, the lowest cost for every project. And up until a couple of years ago, you had to do something called a design bid build, which is you design something, then you bid it out to a company to build it. With a design build, it's an all in one package that someone designs it, and agrees to build it for a set cost. And I've worked with this in Kansas before, Illinois, Iowa, all do design, bid, build. And it's just a different way to get something built. So may not be more cost effective, might be more cost effective, either which way the project gets built. And you're, so the benefit to doing that is you're really getting the, the people who are the most qualified for the job and not necessarily just the lowest cost. Is that correct? That's correct. And it also streamlines the process a little bit where it's it's all in one package. You open one envelope and go, okay, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it versus, you know, we go out for bid for an architect, then we go out to, to bid for a construction company. And so it's, it's a little bit more of a streamlined process. Adam, can you talk about the company that we ended up using as a result of that process and how the selection of that company came about? 
Yeah, so we decided to go with Westport Pools. Um, they were the winner of the, the bid uh, process that we, we went out and did. Uh, Westport Pools is actually the company that built North Point Aquatic Center, so they were very familiar with our layout, with our design of the facility, and how to uh, make, things, make sure things fit right. And they've also built our indoor pool, too. Um, they're also the company that has winterized our pools for the past uh, 15 years out at North Point. And um, so we were very happy with them. They came out with a great design. Um, it did come under the, the budget line that we were looking for. So it was a pretty easy decision to go with Westport. And Adam, we talked a little bit about this, but we've, could you give us an update about the timeline of completing these, these updates and what the next steps are? Are we on track? We are on track. Uh, the, the splash pad is actually done. If you drive by, uh, sometimes we have it up and running just to keep things uh, oiled and ready to go and stuff like that. The, uh, the play feature is on its way. Uh, new paint is going in and uh, on the, the, the uh, kiddie pool itself, uh, shortly it should be filled, if not already filled by the time this video com or podcast comes out. And uh, we just got a couple other features that uh, um, are on order and should be coming in. Um, not operational, but more aesthetic features that we've got going on and it should be uh, good to go. Great. Uh, Scott, let's transition a little bit because it's obvious that there's a lot of excitement and this, this upgrade process is really good for the aquatic center itself, but can you talk a little bit about how it might be beneficial for the city of Baldwin as a whole? Well, I think that having these types of amenities that are uh, a top tier quality is excellent for the city. Um, it brings people, it's a, it's a great service for our residents and for the people who belong to these, uh, to the point, the North Point, um, the golf course. But what it also does is it brings people that aren't necessarily familiar with our community into our community. Um, and with that comes, uh, they go to lunch, they go to shopping, um, they look around at the real estate opportunities that are here. Um, Bowen has so much to offer that, uh, and sometimes I think people from other parts of the region don't necessarily come this way, but when you have a unique uh, facility such as North Point, um, you get a section of people here who are young families or people who are focused on a lot of the activities that the city is pushing um, and the type of the community is wanting these types of people uh, in our community and it's just a great way to bring them and their families in to enjoy what we're offering to the region. And the improvements being made at the Aquatic Center are definitely not the only things that are happening out there. Adam, can you talk a little bit about some of the other programs and events that are going to be happening at the Aquatic Center this summer? Absolutely. Uh, so a few things we got going on. We got some themed uh, night swims or twilight swims, what we call them, uh, this year. We're looking really excited about those. They're going to be uh, a little bit more in-depth, a lot more um, interactive activities and stuff like that. So we're, we're planning out some great things for those. Uh, swim and dive team is always a popular activity that we have going on. Uh, we got a new coach this year. Her name is uh, Coach Blakely, and we're really excited about her experience and uh, references and stuff. So um, we also have what we call Family Float Fridays. Uh, I want to kind of go in and give a, a little bit of a shout out for this program. It's something that we're really um, excited about doing. We've done it a couple years, uh, but uh, on Fridays at 4 o'clock, we, uh, we announce Family Float Fridays. Two things get to happen at four o'clock on Fridays. We, we start selling uh, root beer floats um, in the afternoons. And then uh, we also allow anybody to bring in their own flotation vice for the Lazy River. Uh, it could be a, a, a noodle. It could be a, a really big, cool uh, flotation device. It could be a retro um, inner tube that you brought from home. Whatever you guys want. Um, we'll let you guys use them from four o'clock until close. And we're actually open late on Friday nights until 930. So we have extended hours on Fridays. So you got a lot of time and a lot of activities just on Fridays to, to come out on Family Flo Float Fridays. I think that's important to note too because I think some people see people bring their own flotation device during that time frame and then think they can do that anytime, but that's not the case for the rules at the Lazy River. Correct. Uh, what we try to do is maintain uh, consistency with our tubes so that it's not too much of a distraction or a, a hindrance for our lifeguards to keep people safe and stuff. So, But we do think it's necessary to allow people to have fun and interact with our own materials or tools, uh, toys. So uh, Fridays gives us a great opportunity. We can uh, mainstream that activity during that time frame um, so that everyone understands that that's, that's the time frame that we do allow those activities to happen. And finally, this might be the most exciting update for me at North Point this summer, is um, besides all the great features that are being improved, is we're going to actually have an ice cream machine out at North Point this summer, correct? Correct. The rumor is true. Uh, we are going to have ice cream out at North Point. We're really excited about that. Um, 
the the ice cream helps us with the the float fridays uh it's a it's an added uh easy uh quick uh sweet treat that we can provide to all of our patrons out there um and who doesn't like ice cream be crazy if you didn't well that brings us to the end of the episode once again so if you haven't already watched some of the videos that we've posted on the north point aquatic center's facebook page feel free to head there and watch those and you can actually get a, a look at what the features that we're talking about today and see what that's going to look like this summer so head on over to the North Point Aquatic Center's Facebook page. And then remember that opening day is May 26th of 2018. Doors open at 1130. Uh, the line can get long on that day, um, just when everybody's excited for that first day. So feel free to head to the point at Baldwin Commons beforehand because you can always buy your pool pass or renew your resident ID card ahead of time to avoid the wait. So um, make sure you get that done in the next couple of weeks and we're really looking forward to a great summer. So thanks for being here today, Adam. Uh, and until next time, keep enjoying the ball in life. <laughs>